Hey guys, and welcome back to the only channel bringing you BMET tips and tricks to make it through the schoolhouse. So before we get into it, I want to tell you a joke. Are you ready? What did the current say to the light bulb? What are you doing? Which is an excellent transition for today's topic, DC power. We also talked about voltage and current divider circuits, and the last thing that we covered was resistive bridge circuits. So let's get after some DC power. Power is the rate of energy or work that a component or components is performing in the circuit. Remember current and voltage and their relationship? They were proportional, right? Since power is a function of current and voltage, power is going to be directly proportional to voltage and current. What does this mean? If current or voltage increase with no change in resistance, then the power produced will increase. The same can be said for a decrease in either voltage or current. If voltage or current decrease with no change in resistance, power will also decrease. Now power is inversely proportional to resistance, meaning if there is an increase in resistance, the amount of power dissipated from a component will decrease. Think about a regular incandescent light bulb. We've all seen them, right? They usually say 60 watts or 100 watts on them. Power is measured in watts. This means that the rate of work being performed is 60 watts or 100 watts respectively. The formulas to find power are located in table one on your formula sheet. Utilize the two values given in a problem and solve for the missing value. If current and voltage are given, use the current times voltage formula. If current and resistance are given, use the current squared multiplied times the resistance. Now that you can calculate power for a given circuit, let's move on to voltage and current dividers. Voltage and current dividers are used to provide a circuit with several voltage drops from a single higher source voltage. It is comprised of two or more resistors connected in series. VO represents our unloaded voltage. This is when the load resistor, or RL, is not part of the circuit. To calculate VO, first find the total resistance for the series circuit. In this case, it is 15K. Then find IT. 60 volts divided by 15K gives us an IT of 4 milliamps. Now we can take our IT multiplied by the resistor value of R3 to get the voltage drop at test point one. This is our VO. When we load a voltage divider by closing the switch, the circuit becomes a series parallel circuit. The load is connected in parallel with one or more of the series resistors. VD represents the loaded voltage output seen at test point one when the load or RL is part of the circuit. When a load is added to a voltage divider circuit, current flowing through the circuit will increase, the resistance will decrease, and the voltage output will decrease. To calculate VD, first find the RE of the resistors in parallel, then add that value to the resistors in series. We can then calculate total current. To find the voltage drop at test point one, you have to multiply IT by the RE value from step one. That's all there is to it. Now to move on to resistive bridge circuits. Resistive bridge circuits are commonly used in test equipment and thermostat circuits. They are comprised of two voltage dividers connected in parallel. Resistive bridge circuits are used to compare a known value to an unknown value. Negative coefficient temperature probes, which show a decrease in resistance as temperature increase and shows an increase in resistance as temperature decreases. Positive coefficient temperature probes will show an increase in resistance as temperature increases. This brings us to measuring a bridge circuit with a meter. To measure the difference between the known and unknown sides of our bridge resistive circuit, the black lead will be attached to a point of known value, test point one. We can then connect our red test lead to test point two. Remember that the purpose of a bridge circuit is to compare a known value to an unknown value. We do this by subtracting the unknown side from the known side, or TP2 minus TP1. If the measured value at TP2 is larger than TP1, the measured value will be positive. If the measured value at test point two is smaller than test point one, the measured value will be negative. If the values at TP2 and TP1 are equal, the bridge circuit is balanced. I know what you're thinking. Do I have to calculate the values of a bridge circuit? Well, what kind of torture would this be if you didn't have to? But I promise it's super easy. We will calculate each side just like a series circuit starting with the known side first. First, calculate RT using R1 and R2. Then calculate IT by dividing the applied voltage 
by RT. Then multiply IT by R2. This gives us our known value at test point one. Rinse and repeat for the unknown side using R3 and R4 to calculate RT. Now that you have the voltages at test point one and test point two, perform the calculation TP2 minus TP1. And voila, you're done. Alrighty guys, that wraps up our rewind for day seven. Today we covered power and DC circuits, voltage and current dividers, and resistive bridge circuits. As always, stay classy and keep your head up.